Hey guys, Tyler Edlin here, illustrator, artist, and instructor. And I wanted to do a quick video this week because I'm still working on some of the longer ones that are taking a bit more time than I intended. So let's just answer one of my students' questions and maybe it'll help some other people as well. So basically, Nicole asked this week about referencing. In particular, is there anything that makes a reference good or bad? And what process do you use to figure out what reference you should look for? And do you use any other resources other than Google and Pinterest? So that's a great question. I, I see it often enough. And uh, for me, I think what it comes down to really is, is the reference serving a specific purpose? Is there a reason for spending your time, you know, going to get it, for saving it, for copying it, for filing it in any particular folder or online database and then bringing it back up you know when you're working on an image is it worth the effort and if, I, I feel it is with a good reference and if that reference is helping you progress further with a particular image we will look at a few examples of what works and what doesn't and in a, some you know in, in various cases some will be student examples some will be uh, my own so a lot of what doesn't make for a good reference is if it starts to throw the context off or if it's just entirely irrelevant. So see, I got this image up here on screen. Now the goal for this student was they were to draw, they were trying to draw a particular style of environment and, and structure. And this one in the middle up here is just so random. It is so irrelevant to a lot of these. This and this abandoned warehouse. You could see that there's a common trait between uh, this left one, this bottom middle one, and this these two on the uh, right. Like they all have similarities. They can all kind of add to the same design language. These two are so far out there. They're so far removed in terms of that subject. And again, that context, they're just wasting space on the page. They could ultimately, in worst case scenario, start to pull your design in terms of a different direction and you'll ultimately lose focus. Similarly, when some students are designing, like let's say an environment, and they want to do like a particular canyon with some structures, you know, very common things for an environment. You'll see, or I typically see reference sheets like this. The problem with this is, yes, they are all mountains in terms of like their subject, but they're very different. They all have different lighting. They all have different, they're all different types of mountains. These are literally mountains from all over the world. It looks like we have stuff from China. There's stuff from the Midwest or Switzerland. You know, there's stuff from the Southwest in the US. Uh, there's literally everything and the problem that's going to happen is like it's they're so unfocused it, it's a very poor reference sheet you want to kind of boil those down a bit and essentially increase their their focus and and really just make them a bit more narrow in regards to what they're kind of showing either in the lighting or the shapes or forms because this comes down to referencing shapes and forms and these are all very different shapes or forms they're they're very different terrain they're very different climates and a, as a result Often you'll just, I'll just see quite a mixed bag of sketches like this, where I look at these, these are, you know, these are sketches for an environment, but it's like, I can't tell you if that's supposed to be snow. I can't tell from this if it's supposed to be desert. I know literally nothing about this aside from a few basic compositional cues, and that's why it doesn't work great. Now, something like this is a little less severe, but I do see it often enough. So if their goal was to draw up and design some icebergs and they wanted to take some more visual or stylistic cues, I suppose, by Alan Lee here. Particularly, I guess, the, the, the contrast, the motion, the lighting. I just don't think in particular, at least personally, that that's a great reference that, that's kind of helping this. It's just, it feels a little irrelevant. It It's stylistically just way too off the mark. Like, I think if you're trying to reference these three specific things, there's got to be a closer a resource or reference out there to what some icebergs could look like even things from like animated movies you know like um illuminations the grinch or one of the happy feet so there's a lot of movies that kind of feature this uh this sort of biome that i think could ultimately be more useful than this so again this is just kind of wasting space not a great reference in my opinion now the worst contender again where you see references that don't work so good I, I definitely require a lot of students to try to declare their intent in terms of what they're aiming for. And I think in regards to that, yes, they hit all their notes. But the problem is this stuff, a lot of it's concepts of concepts. So if if he's doing or referencing these 
just specifically like this, you're just iterating off of somebody else's design. And that would make for a pretty poor reference if that's all you're using. You'd have to balance that out with a lot more real world stuff. But the thing is, these things just don't mix that well. They, they are very unfocused. They are very, like they're pulling in many, many directions. So of course, when I see designs like that, you, you start to get, again, here's the intent, a dwarven castle in the mountains, but sci-fi. I'm not saying that's impossible, but you'll get something very unrecognizable often enough because they're pulling from so many design languages. It Everything about this is unfocused. It's just like there's not enough real-world restraints in there to really make this successful. So again, I, I'd have to transcribe this. I'd have to really look at it and study it to understand it because it's really hard to figure out, and that makes for a poor design. Now, for some of my examples on what makes a good reference, I like to include things that directly help. So here's something very much work in progress. I'm just designing out some villages, villagers, so I'm finding some shapes. But right now, they're pretty much entirely referenced at this point. I started to run out of creative steam. So what I had to do is I had to you know, take a step back, put this away, spend a good hour researching and referencing online so I could help these, uh, these kind of South Pacific Islanders feel a little more authentic. I was researching Thailand, you know, you know, parts of Japan, Indonesia, to even ancient Hawaiian cultures. And I ended up whipping up a bit of a reference that looked like this. So now, like each and every one of these references that I found and now have included here, I can take something from each and every one of them and add them onto my drawing and it will ultimately enhance it. So to me, a good reference is something that enhances you know, your existing idea or something that could take it to the next level. It, it's entirely supportive. If we break this down into a sports analogy, which I don't like doing often enough, I'm not a sports guy, but like if I'm the quarterback on the team, he can't do anything without all the support, all the player. The, 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 it's an entirely team sport. So as an artist, I'm like the leader on my own little team. The reference is going to be supportive. So if the reference is not supporting or if there's like a weak player, then it's like you got to remove it off the sheet, replace it with something, you know, sub it in, substitute it in for something more useful. So like I could take either the posing or some of these materials or how they're carrying. It, this is everyday life. And that's it's something I'm not that familiar with. It's a culture on the other side of the world and it's, you know, there, there's various historic relevances to this. There's patterns, there's rhythms. Uh, and I can bring that all into my very made up looking sketches to make them feel a lot more authentic. Some things need to be just very deliberate references, uh, you know, aside from style and things. So like, so here's one of my Yakuza illustrations I did for fun, and I, referencing has to come in many shapes or forms. So in addition to like using just Google and Pinterest, I'll use 3D, I'll use and pose Daz characters as you can see here, to pose for the lighting, to pose for the anatomy. Or I'll use a website like Sketchfab 3D, where I can visually rotate you know, almost an infinite number of uh, possible objects and set the lighting, screen capture that page, and then ultimately bring that right into my picture and start working on it. But again, I, I don't like to leave anything too, too made up if I'm going for something that's supposed to be accurate. If you're trying to be some abstract artist and stuff, that's fine, reference whatever you want or lack of it, that's fine. But when we're working on specific fundamentals, when we're trying to learn design languages, without a doubt, referencing is just absolutely necessary to grow. And so I will, I'll, I'll throw my own clothes, I'll, I'll pose family members in various shoes, I'll, I'll buy and build models, and I'll get specific references just for the lighting, but each and every part of it is just a separate piece of the puzzle that I need to research and understand. So every part of it is important in adding to that context and believability. Like likewise, if I'm just gonna sketch up some kind of architecture, even though it's something that's, again, very real world and grounded, it's a brutalist structure. I don't need to reinvent the idea of what brutalist uh, styles are. I just simply need to do a little bit of research on the back end, reference what some of the common reoccurring themes in, in, in regards to the positioning of these shapes and these forms and these patterns and how they're using line. That's what I want to familiarize myself so my design could ultimately fit right in there with them. So. It, it's not necessarily for me about having a high amount of reference. I like to compact it and make it all about the quality at the end of the day. So I hope uh, you know that answered my students' question last night in class, and I hope it helps any of you that were wondering a very similar thing. Uh, stay tuned. Definitely subscribe because I do have some more content coming up. I think up next will be a review, and then I'm still working on some more of my, my longer, more informative videos. So yeah, take care. Have a great weekend.
Guys, thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe if you want to see more. You can check me out on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. If you want more in-depth content from me, I teach two courses at the CG Master Academy, Architecture Design and Fundamentals of Design. If you want even more learning, you can go to BrushSauceAcademy.com and sign up for one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Join the hundreds of students around the world and start improving your art and design today. If you want to be part of a community, we have Brush Sauce on Discord. We have monthly challenges and hangouts. There are links below for everything I mentioned. Thanks again for watching and take care.